as we know, uh, the vote happened last Saturday. Results came in, and collectively, it turned out to be a uh, no. Across all of the states, yes. um, we had a breakdown of the states where um, what well, one um, to to get the vote to pass. Yep. Mm-hmm. We needed at least four states four to out say of seven. four out of seven to say yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, yeah, it's even um, what you call it, Northern Territory and South Australia. South Australia, like they count towards the national vote for some reason, but they don't have their own kind of state vote, I believe. Um, so where do they get chucked in? They get chucked into the national, the yeah, national right. but vote, but they don't count as a state. But they don't count because it's, it's Which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. territory. Anyway, um, so the results, if we break it down state by state. So overall, it was about 60 to 40%. Yep. I think it was uh, the specific numbers were 61 SNL, to 39. Yeah, the split, yep. yes. um, uh, Australian Capital Territory was the only jurisdiction to have voted yes oh, wow. by yeah. majority. Is that the smallest uh, territory by virtue of numbers? Um, I believe so. Australian given probably the size, given, the, given the size yeah, yeah, and the yeah. population. population. Usually smaller um, than other states. Uh, we should probably do a double check on that just to make sure yeah. we can do that in post. Um, but uh, New South Wales was 60% no. Uh, we had Victoria with 55% no. Which was a shock a bit to... <laughs> well, but yeah, well, yeah. Um, 69% with Queensland saying no. Yep. Um, South Australia... Uh, was also 65% no. And to note here, not one South Australian electorate returned a majority yes, whereas the other had electorates. Um, the others had yes. some yeah, electorates. Yeah. Um, Tasmania was 60% no. Mm. And uh, Western Australia was 64% no. And then the Northern Territory is 61% no, which is interesting to highlight here, according to the Daily Oz. Um, Northern Territory has the highest proportion oh, of right, first, right. first, first first Nations yeah. Australians mm. in the country, 30% of its total population. Remote polling data in Northern Territory suggested Indigenous communities largely voted yes. A similar trend was observed in Queensland. They voted yes, but it was no there? Is that the same? Well, because it's only 30% of the population. So they don't have the majority of the... They don't have the majority of the... But it had the largest... The 30% is the largest across the states, right? And and then, sorry, closing it out with um, ACT with 61% yes. They have uh, three federal seats um, that voted yes. Mm -hmm. All the pollies are there though, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It we can we can yeah. um there's 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 Hypothesize. probably a whole lot more information that broke down to yeah, yeah. you know again when it comes down to the numbers it comes to the demographics the um uh, uh socioeconomic yeah, yeah, standing yeah, yeah. I think, um, all of that stuff right and it's and and also um alignment with political parties yeah yeah you know? I- ideologies and stuff like yeah, that yeah, but yeah. I think like. This, this is not new information and in that heading up to the polling, um, heading up to he- heading up to the referendum, rather, there was polls that basically said Had this, indicated no. that, that yep. no was going to be the majority vote. And mm-hmm. like it, um, it happened pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if I can say this, but I, I was I was working in and like we were still counting and we, we, we got told that. But like, I think, yeah, it's an it's an interesting one. Um like we we obviously we had a reaction to the uh, the ad, the, the first one of the, the first one of the first, ye- the yes, first ads, uh, yeah, the, yes ads, and we had like a little conversation about it, but we haven't delved deep. But like, I think, yeah, I mean, like we've seen the states ACT voted yes, the majority no. I think it just it the numbers are the numbers. Like Australia clearly wasn't ready for what the referendum, the voice, you know, the voice referendum. And and the uh, the interesting question is is why do we think that's the case? I mean, sixty forty is like it's not it's not uh, not as yeah it's too, not it's as not as an eighty twenty. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know how else to kind of look at it. So there are people there, but like uh, to get a majority is hard. It was mm. always statistically it was going to be hard, and yeah. like then yeah, once, like the it, once you chuck being, in the states dynamics, the closest other than ACT is it was being fifty five percent, which yeah. is you know, which is you know like statistically it means that like there 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 are a decent chunk of individuals that like agreed with the alignment there, but like I think there are a couple of different ways we can say. One is like 
you know, I read somewhere that like the, the voice result demonstrates like a growing rift uh, between like Australians and like there was a lot of voices about the voice in the Aboriginal camp, at least well known, that said no. And I think for a lot of people that were trying to form an opinion, like that, that seemed quite jarring. Like why, you know, people would be advocates of that. And again, this just goes to show how multi-layered mm -hmm. yes. just the whole Never. debate and just, just the whole understanding of this was, right? Because I guess the topic within itself, again, um, you made note of it too, right? Yeah. Other than prior to that, if I can say, had didn't have as much awareness about it, what it meant, and yeah. and all, and and I guess the the organizations and the movement behind it and what it all means, right? And yeah. the privilege that we got to being able to understand that, um, seeking sources to form that opinion. Um, and that decision, yeah. right? That's one piece aside. But if I can say the it, the the topic in itself, and and I think you mentioned it as well, is that there's so many things that so many facets within this question yeah. that can impact can inform can if it's based on kind of semantics understanding history especially with the first uh the first um uh, first people Nations of australia and the first indigenous Nations. community yeah it when you're getting these different sources to inform it amongst the day-to-day -day, amongst all of the the things you need to do, the problems and all that stuff. Mm. There's only so much kind of, I guess, I guess depending on the person, how passionate you feel about it. Yeah. I, I mean, in any normal election, there are many people that do not care about it whatsoever, right? Yep. They're just going to avoid the fine. Yep. It's And it's also just unfortunate how it's an issue that affects them the most, that affects First Nations people the most, and it depends on people who aren't First Nation. And that that that's a, it, that's another that's another dynamic to to all of this as well, right? Yeah. And then it's also if we talk about the history and the hurts that um, the First Nations have endured. Yes. Um, that uh, I guess that speaks to your point, Kev, about some people saying no because it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just and, and that that's that's the 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 interesting point of all of this, right? Within that question. There was questions about is it enough? What does this mean for everybody yeah. else? Um, you know, I think the the no party had this sense of um, uh, voting no to the division of the voice. Yeah. Mm. So that was an a, an interesting communication spin. If on you it if all. you think about it, there are just so many logical. Uh, what do you, what what am I trying to say? There are so many logical. Uh, what am I trying to say? Th there are so many logical conversations that you can have in your head to agree on the no side mm -hmm. if you actually really think about it or like there's some like you said i don't know what this is about i don't care <laughs> like no yeah. you, you're like, I'm, not, I'm not saying it and yeah. how does it affect me why why is there favoritism all yeah, all, you know. equal. all valid if you think in isolation by the way you can convince yourself that all of these are there and i think that i think that the other thing as well is how long ago did albanese call this vote like a couple of months, right? Like what? Like we knew there a referendum was, was going to come, but Carson we did not know coming. maybe specifically what it was. Well, and it was it was part of his um, campaign. It was, it, but did we know it was going to be about the voice? Because I yes. kind of yes, yes, we, yes. Okay, I was they, they, yes. They just mentioned it was called the voice, and then yeah. so many months. Okay, no, no, no. If it was called like, the voice, then it then about? it was. It's just that maybe we were not just close to it at the time because that that the term the voice is is not a new term, right? Like. It, it has been brought about. Okay, cool. Okay, so I guess, I guess my point is for something th that complex and big, I reckon you need a fair amount of runtime to actually get people to think about it, debate, yeah. have conversations. And if the, the couple of ways you can think about it, and we're not talking about like the yes vote is right or the no vote is right, by the way. No. This, is, no. this is fodder. This is conversation and this is topic. This is this is what the, again, this podcast was built about, having an intelligent conversation and sharing perspectives there. But if you were on the yes vote side and you wanted to generally give it a chance, I think you need a year almost. Think about it. If, I, if, if you had two months and you got 40%, hey, that's not bad. 
Uh, statistically, I would say that if I had two months and it was 80-20, you shot yourself in the foot. Like mm-hmm. uh, statistically, you could convince yourself to believe that to, to be able to change the sentiment over time, you could have it because there was like a growing sentiment. And again, I don't have empirical stuff to back this out, but especially in Southwest Sydney, where we believe that a lot of people just did not know what the hell it was about. What to counter that point, it could be argued by the people that are involved in trying to make this happen, that it's been a fight for years, right? And to your point, I guess if we could meet in the middle, it's about a long lasting, I don't want to say campaign, but it's just that ongoing awareness that needs to happen, right? And mm. if I can bring back that point, it's that it's it's to hone in on the fact of inclusivity. Mm. Yes. Um, uh, recognition. A, the recognition of diversity. And it's also being able to um, just be open to learning and understanding things that are outside of your immediate of bias your stuff, and yeah. circle, right? Yeah. I think that's ultimately what it is because, again, um, not going into specifics, right, where we've got so many facets to this. We've got the cultural differences where we've got people that are um, non-English speaking background. Yes. We've got older generation, younger generation, be, uh, uptake, yeah. you know? Sorry. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. But like, I would be amazed. Like, this is like, if you're into like data and that, I would love oh. to recut <laughs> this by demographic and see h- how big Australia's population is towards, just say, older and what that vote was. I mean, there's so many tidbits that you could kind of get there, which kind of maybe leads to my next point. So do we think... Australia would ever be open. And the, I think the interesting thing about this that makes it challenging is the ye- uh, the ye- um, the voice v- vote, let's call it the voice referendum, voice referendum, in its current execution, right? Mm-hmm. But let's call it in its current execution because the big element about this execution which made it a referendum worthy, or so the yes voters will say, and I'm saying it like that just to say that I'm not in any side here. We're just Factually, talking about, it was it, called we'll say is the introduction of this within the constitution. Mm -hmm. That's why that was one of the reasons, because no government of the day can simply add things in a constitution, which was a big deal for a lot of people, right? Uh, At least for no advocates there. For example, having a voice within parliament, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but there, there there is an iteration of this that occurs there. And I'm sure if... Not, not, not I, I'm not sure because I'm not sure, but I felt I, my view is if it wasn't, if an element of this referendum was not about putting it in the constitution, you might have had stronger sort of buy in because putting it in the constitution is something that you can't take back. So mm-hmm. when you go into dynamics like that, people are very wary about putting anything in the constitution. If, if that, like, let alone, you know what I mean? Anything, period. So I think, like, do we feel in this current execution of what the voice is? that Australia would be open to a yes vote, a majority yes vote, ever? I think down the line. Well, In our lifetime or what? <laughs> I hope in our lifetime. I because 50 years. Look, let's, let's, let's put some empirical, um, empirical like stats on this, right? Mm. Where it's the last referendum of this. Yeah, uh, what was the split? It, 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 in the, um, not, not, sorry, not even the split. The, when it was first kind of, put on the agenda right was in 1997 they had a they had a so this, yeah. we're talking now but was it in the same execution i.e in the 30 referendum? years yeah um let me check actually because i was actually just pulling up the statement of the heart because it's 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 yeah, the yeah. statement that's of the what heart, it's been built upon the statement of the heart is what kind of brought on this next Correct. iteration and yeah. what i wanted to speak about that is it's just the ongoing um voicing that needs to happen to move things forward. And I wanted to just tie into your point about um, earlier in the sense of to move forward and just to be, to constantly have that drive for a better future. Mm. I think that's what ultimately, so yes, to answer your question, yes, I believe in a better future and I want to see this happen. Mm. It is the responsibility of so many people. Yes. And everyone to understand what does this mean to then have an opinion about it to then move it forward mm. especially because yeah. like in d- the issues regarding indigenous like it doesn't just pertain just to australia it's in other countries as well the yeah. united states they have to recognize the indigenous people canada mm. um other places in asia so it's just a matter of 
like the indigenous people across all the world, but particularly here, the Aboriginals, like they have been here for so long. And I would like for a while, I just to sort of inferring, I guess what I would like to hope for is that they do get that recognition mm. because they deserve so. But it's a matter of like you were saying, because what the execution of it, what yes. the, how, how, how is it communicated? Especially yeah. to at least, yeah, inform people because as you were saying, like a lot of people just didn't know. Like yeah, whole I feel like the other thing. About. Yeah, no, no, I understand why actually. Um, but yeah. Okay, so sorry, I was just reading up on some things quickly. We could even go back an odd thirty years to nineteen sixty seven re- referendum, mm-hmm. where Australians voted in favor for changes to the Australian Constitution to improve the services available to Indigenous Australians. Mm-hmm. Um, going to uh, um read this quickly um the first section specified that federal laws designed to protect all australians didn't apply to indigenous people so therefore essentially making sure that they've got access to funded uh services by the by the federal government with social security and education um and then also um being able to vote Mm. is which is huge right um to have that same right as an Australian. Mm. Um, So in that time, 90.77% of Australians voted in favour of changing these sections of the constitution, believing that it signified the end of racial discrimination. Yeah. yeah. Well, the vote, the vote thing is, is like V1, right? So yeah, like, so that was, that was 1967. Mm. And then if we've got, we're going to 1997. Sorry, I'm just doing this on the fly. I'm going to read a Reconciliation Convention of 1997. Uh, That's towards the National Reconciliation, which began in 1991, um, established by the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation. The key goals was to educate all Australians about Indigenous issues, to improve economic and living standards for Indigenous people, to acknowledge the unfair and often inhumane treatment of Indigenous Australians throughout history. And my source for this is the State Library of Victoria. Um, just to make sure that we've covered all of our bases. And then in 1997, uh, there was a huge, uh, Australia took a huge step to these goals um, with the Australian Reconciliation Convention. And it's a forum of 1,800 people to to, to talk about these issues. Um, And then there was a somewhat of a blemish of, I guess, how it was being portrayed and... um, we won't go into that for because there's a, that's it's it's there's a lot more yeah, conversation yeah. there. But yep. one can only hope mm. in our lifetime, like it's slow but hopefully steady progress to be able to make better conditions, better recognition for First Nations people. Because it's the if we if we even go back one second, if I'm thinking about from my own personal view, right? If this was happening to People like us. Yes. Yes. What would we want? (laughs) It's about (laughs) empathy. It's about putting yourself in that position. I mean, that so many oppressed groups have eventually gotten their rights when it was was, was either women or if it was uh, non-white people. Like, you just hope that hopefully it'll come the same for Indigenous people. 